Some of the action from day two of the Asia Oceania Championships as the Australian Rollers took on the Japanese. We expected a real contest, but the Rollers blew the game apart with a 19-3 first quarter, bamboozling their opponents with their skill and ultimately flattening them with their physicality. It was a pretty tough game. The Australians ended up victors by 36 points. And so as we enter day three of this round robin tournament, the Australian Rollers are in the very happy position of only needing one more victory to safely secure their passage to the World Championships in England next year. Hello, everyone, and welcome to day three. We're from the Dandenong Basketball Stadium yet again, where Australia are taking on Korea. Before we preview that batch, let's have a look at the results from the first couple of days. Back on Tuesday, Japan was successful over Korea, China over Malaysia, Australia thumped Kuwait and then the Japanese backed up for their second match of the day, took on the Chinese and had a comfortable 26 point victory. Yesterday it was the Australians who had to play two matches on the day, they took on Malaysia early, defeated them by a whopping 83 points. Korea and China fought out a really a tough battle, the Koreans ended up winning and that is a real psychological advantage as they push for the, one of the top three spots in this tournament which is very vital secu to secure qualification through to the World Championships next year. Australia defeated Japan and then in a thriller late last night the Malaysians survived a last quarter comeback from the Kuwaitis, ended up winning by just the one point. Well, joining me once again on day three, uh, as he has done right throughout the week, is Australian Paralympic gold medalist Brendan Dowler. Brendan, welcome back. Thank what you very much, Darren. What's impressed you both most about the rollers so far in the tournament? I think the rollers so far that's impressed is the depth of their, of their bench. I mean, everyone's contributed. We came with uh, pretty much a split team, six experienced guys, six new guys. But the new guys have really come on the court and made a mark and have really pushed their chances for selection in next year's World Championship team. Well, Looking into this game against Korea, what do you think the Koreans will bring? Uh, they're a slightly different lineup to the Japanese, but perhaps their style of game is similar. Yes, it is very similar. The Koreans have been around for a fair while, Darren, and they really know what they're doing. They've got a few offensive threats out there, so Australia will have to be on the ball today to keep, shut that down and um, take care of business. And it's a little bit different to the Japanese, who, as we know, really just have the, the one major offensive weapon. So, as you say, the Australian defence, which is so good yesterday, will have to be on it again. Yes, yeah, certainly, and I hope that makes it a bit of a game. It was a bit of a blowout again yesterday, so we're we're really looking forward to a close game today. All right, Brendan, well, let's have a look at some of the key players from the Aussie Rollers side, starting with Brad Ness. He's uh, averaging 22 points a game so far in the tournament. Yeah, that's Brad, and that's what we expect from Brad. He leads from the front. He has been the captain uh, in previous tournaments, although Justin Everson is the captain of this tournament. Brad, he's a big fella, he's a big presence, and he's very intimidating for the opposition. One of the players who has a crucial role as one of the low classification players. Uh, he's really taken your spot, hasn't he, Jeremy Dawes? Yes, he has. He took my spot and he took my number as well, number 14. But he's been very impressive. And all, all, the, all the talk about Jeremy has been how intense he plays. He's getting a bit of aggression into his game. So he's coming along very well. And what do you make of the play of Scott Crowley so far in the tournament? Uh, as we see there, it's the first time playing for the Rollers. Yeah, I mean, big opportunity for Scott. He's had limited opportunity so far in the tournament. But he's a very talented player. And hopefully he can get on the court and show us what he can do today. Thanks, Brendan. Well, the players just going through their final warm-ups. The tip is not too far away. Let's cross down to the sidelines where Olivia McGrath is joining us once again. And, Liv, I know you've been doing your research. Uh, it's been quite a while since the Aussie Rollers have played the Koreans. It certainly has, Darren. The last time these two sides met was in the qualifying tournament for Beijing back in 2007. Since then, Korea has a new coach and a few new faces in the squad. So this really is an unknown for Australia. I was just talking to Coach Ettridge. He said, regardless, it's going to be a tough game and we can expect some fouls. Getting very close to a start here at Dandenong in this matchup between Australia and Korea. The Aussie starting fives. Well, they've gone for their, the strongest starting lineup that they can probably put on the court in this tournament. Justin Eveson, Sean Norris, Michael Hartner, Jeremy Doyle and Brad Ness. They're trying to send a message once again, aren't they, uh, Brennan Dell? They sure are. They want to come out. They want to come out strong. That's uh, four of the starting five from the gold medal game in Beijing there again. So, yeah, they're out to, to make a point early on. Whilst for the Koreans, they've gone for the same five that started the game against the Chinese yesterday. And they actually played over 90% of the game time between these five. Kim Ho Yong, Kim Dong Hun, Ko Kwang Yub, Cho Sing Swong Hun and Baek Sung Ha. 
That's uh, obviously the, what the coach believes is their strongest lineup. Yeah, it is, and hopefully they can get uh, get out there and, and take it to the Aussies early on. Uh, there's some very interesting pronunciations there, Darren, so well done. Yeah, that's a good start anyway. <laughs> well, Olivia had mentioned a moment ago that it's been a while since you played career. I hope that a few of those guys played in that match, as you would have back in 2007. You can perhaps give me a hand. But uh, they look, as we said at the start, they've got a few offensive weapons. Sung Hyun Cho who's number 10 for Korea, scored 23 points against China yesterday. Uh, they shot the ball at almost 50%, so the Aussie defence is going to have to be uh, in their face and really doing as strong a job as they can. Yes, yeah, so I was speaking to the Aussie coach Ben Etridge there yesterday, and he mentioned number 10 specifically. He's a young and upcoming guy. He's got big wraps on him, so I'm sure the Aussies will be looking to take care of him and keep him out of the game. But having said that, yeah, the Koreans have got another couple of guys who I've seen shoot, certainly. Uh, number four, Ho Yong Kim. He, he uh, got a buzzer beater against us once over in Korea a few years ago, I remember, and they, they won the game on that, so they're going to have to watch out for him as well. One thing the Australians have done in each match in the tournament is actually blow the game away in the opening quarter. Yesterday against Japan, it was 19-3. to On the opening day against Kuwait, it was 32-5. to And uh, the coach is putting a lot of that credit down to the scouting report. No doubt they'll be on the money again here. They sure will. Uh, a couple of good assistant coaches there that, that really help out in that respect, uh, Craig Friday and Tom Kyle. Doing a great job there for the Rollers. So let's see how the Rollers start this match up against Korea. A nice crowd in. This is Community Day here out at Dandenong. A local community getting behind and uh, supporting this competition, this Six Nation competition. Australia, Korea, Japan, China, Malaysia and Kuwait. The top three sides, of course, qualifying for the World Championship next year. If Australia win today, they will book one of those qualification berths. It's Brad Ness, as he does, takes his time, as opposed to Dong Hyun Kim. And it will go the way of the Koreans first up. Dong Hyun Kim's quite a big fellow there too, so they look like we're going to dog him up and down the court and see how fit he is. This is Kim Ho Yang. Shoots from outside. Ness collects the rebound, gets it to Doyle. There's already <laughs> some difficulties being found by one of the Koreans at half court as uh, he just ended up on the floor after Justin Eveson just knocked him over. It was Ko. And bringing the ball quickly down the court is the young man who we spoke about in the opening section, 25-year-old Cho Sung Hyun. It was a, a loose pass from him. Slapped out of court by Big Brad Ness. Both teams just looking to settle into their, their play here. No score so far, but... Uh... And an offensive foul is called. This is on Cho Sung Hyun. Yeah, a bit of heavy contact out there, a bit of heavy chair contact. Uh, that one rules to be offensive against uh, the Korean player there. Yes, number 10, Cho. And as I mentioned, he's the man who scored 23 points yesterday against China, a match that the Koreans won by 15 points. And form would suggest that the matchup between Korea and China would probably be the most important one. It'll probably be the fight for third spot, which is the final qualification berth, as the Australians looking for their first points of the game. Eveson just caught up a little bit in the middle of the keyway. Brad Ness's shot was off target. Perhaps a bit of a scrappy start, but we can see the Aussies weren't able to penetrate the key as easily there today as what they have been in previous games. So the Koreans might have been doing a bit of scouting of their own. Just trying to clog up that middle corridor, aren't they? Yeah, they want the Aussies to shoot from outside. And hey, that, that's a good move from Korea. Just to finish that thought from a moment ago, Australia, of course, favoured to go through and Japan probably appear to be the second best side in the tournament. They've already got victories over China and Korea. So it'll be really important to see who wins the game between Korea and China, if that's the way it turns out on Saturday. The Koreans already with a slight psychological advantage. With one victory already. So Sean Norris will go to the free throw line after the foul, in the, being fouled in the act of shooting the basketball. Sean did have some injury worries earlier in the week, Darren, but he looks to recover from that pretty well now. He's still got the shoulders strapped up there, as we can see. And I should say, Brendan, that uh, consistently throughout this tournament, I've been referring to Sean as Justin Norris, and I have no idea why. So I Googled Justin Norris, and you know who he is? No, I don't. He's a former Olympic swimmer. He's a 200-metre butterfly, Justin Norris. <laughs> it's just been an error on my part, but uh, it's just one of those things that seems to have stuck in my mind. But it shouldn't. Sean Norris is a, is a superb basketballer. 
and uh, he's played over 100 games for Australia and remarkable talent at just 24 years of age. That's right, he's, he's really grown into his role as well with the team. I can remember when he was just a young pup uh, a few years ago, but now he's one of the more experienced players on the team and taking a real leadership role, so his game's really matured in the last couple of, couple of years. Well, we were chatting about it yesterday. He was... At 17 years of age, he was actually the MVP of the uh, of the, wheelchair, the National Wheelchair Basketball League Grand Final. It's a pretty impressive performance, just doing it on the biggest stage. Just a violation down there with the Korean player went out of court to gain an advantage. That's what the referees ruled. You're not allowed to, to go outside the court and then come back in and gain an advantage. An early timeout's been called by the Australians with uh, 1 minute 50 seconds having a lapse in this opening quarter, as we have done right throughout the week. We can listen into the timeouts hey, for both teams. We're it. going to start with the Australians. You've got, you got to realise, if you've got a choice between 10 and 5, 10 can push, 5 can't. Get a chair on 5, offensively and defensively. At every possession, he's just wheeled down the middle on one push. Yeah? You've got the ball coming in, one big push along. You two have got to lift your work rate. I want him nailed. Nail him, OK? Get after him. Make him work. Make him work. Let's go now. We don't have the luxury of the other days where we're able to get back, turn around and look what's coming. They're already on top of us. You guys will be checking your shoulders straight away before halfway. Get after him. Get after him. So a pretty short, sharp message from Coach Ben Etridge. Not particularly happy with the Australians' work rate. No, not overly happy there. And as we mentioned earlier, you, you pointed out number five, Dong Hing Kim, and, and they really want to work him over and to see how fit he is and perhaps make, uh, make him a bit tighter later in the game, even though he still plays OK early on. Just, just keep grinding away and grinding away. But yeah, probably not the start he was looking for. Here's Norris. Over to Hartnett. Shoots from outside. He misses. Rebound collected there by Kim Ho Yong. Pretty stagnant offense there from the Aussies. They didn't really get any ball rotation or anything, but that I know Coach Etheridge really encourages. Seen him just go down one side. Mikey took a, it was a nice open shot, but perhaps just a little bit early. Olivia McGrath was in the last time out with the Koreans. As, uh, there's a lot of work being done off the ball, Liv. You wouldn't have heard it from Ben Etheridge, but they want to watch out for number five, Kim dong Kyun and Sean Norris taking out his instructions, guarding him all the way up the court. What was the message from Korea's coach? Well, unfortunately, Darren, I'm a lady of a few talents, Korean not being one of them. So, <laughs> But um, I can say the coach was very animated, yelling quite a lot. And I think we should watch out for number 10, Sung Kyun Cho. He got given a fair few directions. I think he'll be trying to play a major role. There is Ko Kwong Yu. He scored the first basket for the Koreans there. It's two points all. Now the Koreans come away with it again. Good pass, outlet pass there from Cho. All the way up the court, Kim. Can he put it away? He does. The Koreans are in front. It's the first time in the tournament, remarkably, that the Australians have fallen behind one of their opponents. Well, I'm as Aussie as they come, and, but that was, it's great to see Korea taking it to the Aussies here this morning. To, 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 pardon me. Today. <laughs> Here's Norris. Misfires. Has been a bit of a lacklustre start from the Rollers. The Koreans now, here's... Oh, great, beautiful pass in from Kim. Over to Cho, puts it away. The Koreans lead six points to two. Great play from the Koreans there. Nice little, little cross move, you can see there. Held his defensive player out, crossed, crossed her across and then flicked the ball on and finished nicely. Justin Eveson under the basket, puts the basket down. Beautiful pass from Norris. Australia, Australia up to four points. Sorry, Darren. Australia's strength there, uh, getting the big guys under the basket. On that occasion, Justin, here's a replay. Backing up the guy just, yeah, he was maybe a bit unlucky. Justin was going backwards, but he was going forwards as well, so a judge to have fouled and going for the three-point play. So Justin Eveson steps up to the line as our stats man, Mark Slocum. I'll tell you, Brendan, he's, all, he's across everything. He's corrected me. In the, uh, in the opening game against Kuwait, the Kuwaitis, you might recall, hit a three-pointer in the opening uh, minute of the game. So they were actually in front of the Aussies. Of course, they ended up losing by 87. So it was uh, not something that they sustained for too long. But no. the Koreans at least have been in front for about two minutes. No, no, this is going to be a very competitive <laughs> game and, and much better than the games we've seen previously this week. Oh, Australia. and from outside, Kim Ho Yong. Three-pointer. The Koreans have started on fire. 
They did shoot the ball pretty well against the Chinese, up around 50% yesterday. Against Japan, they were much lower at about 35%. So if they shoot the ball well, they are in with a chance to keep the scores close. And of course, they're in front at the moment, but Brad Ness converting for Australia. They're going inside to the power game, the Aussies, as we would expect. Eveson and Ness, the only players to have scored. Norris flies by his opponent there, Ko. Shot was a bit overcooked. Rebound taken by Kim dong Hyun. He misses. He will go to the line, though, to shoot a pair. Brad Ness is lying flat in his back in the keyway. Just needs a little bit of space to uh, untether himself and help just get himself to his feet. You can see Brad's an amputee there. He's one of the, uh, the higher class players. Of, takes up four and a half of the 14 classification points allowed on court. I believe he lost his uh, leg in a boating accident in Perth. And uh, you can see he's able to get himself back up with, with his one good leg and strapping himself back in again. There is Brad. He, well, I was having a chat to him yesterday. He's a, he's a Perth boy and he, he, he loves the beach and loves getting out down there in the sun. And uh, he's also about to head off to Italy for another season over there. I think him and Michael Hartnett's in the same team as Brad this year. And uh, they're heading over to Italy on Sunday. So it's... Uh, not a, not a bad life, is it? No, no, no. It's good if you can get it, isn't it? <laughs> Two Perth boys, they're, yeah, they're playing in the same team over in Italy there and they've been going very well. And you can see the combinations on the court here and it pays off for the rollers as well. So this is Kim Dong Hyun. <laughs> Makes the first career, leading by three at the moment. It's his first point of the game. You heard the Australian coach Ben Etridge talking about this player and uh, the fact that he probably can't push as strongly as one or two of the others. And great work there from Jeremy Doyle. He just put his chair in the way of Kim and he's done it again. That is excellent work from Jeremy Doyle. He chased down the loose ball and a big collision at centre court. The defensive defensive foul is called on the Korean Co. Sean Norris has gone flying. Have a look at this. Yeah, clearly didn't have uh, position there. The referee would have ruled that uh, the Korean Kim Young-ho coming across did not quite get in front of Sean. He's allowed to come across as long as he gets far enough in front, but on that occasion, judged not to be far enough. And what about Jeremy Doyle in the backcourt there a minute ago? He uh, chased down the loose ball and then followed up with his put, setting a screen. It was brilliant. That's great work. You don't see all that stuff on the stat sheets, like setting those screens and getting a bit of chair contact back there, but it sets us up, it sets the rollers up, up the other end of the floor then, and it's great work. Eve simply shoot the three. Sides against it, passes into Ness, had great position in the key. Another assist to Big J. They team up superbly. They do, and mention Jeremy Doyle again there. If we had a replay that, we'd see that Jeremy went through first and Big Brad followed him through. So Jeremy, he owns half of that basket. Eveson's called for the foul. They don't let up. Just continuing to battle for position. Even with the ball about to be inbounded. It is one of the features of this game. Just perpetual motion. This is Cho. Ness pushing into position. Good screen was set. It's a three-second violation. It's a three-second violation on number 12, Bake Sang Ha. And uh, great work there from Michael Hartnett, who was uh, pretty much called that, I think. Uh, he certainly waved to get the referee's attention. Yeah, it's just letting them know there, Mike. He's not, 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 not shy. He's a very intense character on the court, Michael Hartnett, number eight for Australia. Mikey Lionheart Hartnett, I would like to call him. He leaves nothing, nothing on the floor. It's Norris into Eveson. Puts the basket away. And again, we can see Mikey Hartnett in there right next to Justin. Justin's followed him through, so Mikey set what we call a seal and created the lane for Justin to get under the basket. Eveson up to five points in this game. He had 20 yesterday against Japan, as well as 12 rebounds and a handful of assists. So Australia back in front now. Let's just have a look at uh, the pass in. You can see Michael Hartnett right involved, as you call, Brendan. Yeah, he, he cleared the path through there, and we call that a seal in uh, wheelchair basketball terms. Which is the term that's, that's used in all kinds of basketball, isn't it? Yeah, I have heard it before, yeah. yeah. Um, pick and roll, 
seals, all the concepts are pretty much the same across the wheelchair and able basketball. So as is the 24 second shot clock which is in operation here, the Koreans down to nine seconds on this possession. Kim's pass was blocked, great work there, anticipation by Norris and also Ness collected the use, loose ball but it was a pretty ordinary pass from Brad Ness. Now Bake, what will he do here? He's cut off there by Doyle, leans back, has good elevation on the shot. And he draws the foul on Jeremy Doyle for a push. He'll go to the free throw line and shoot a pair. This is a great second foul. A great test for the rollers here. The Koreans are really taking it to them, really stretching, stretching the defence. And because they're getting a few baskets down the Korean end, it's a lot harder for the Aussies to get into the usual transition. And they're not getting those same easy baskets they've been getting earlier in the tournament. So this will be a great test for them and how they respond and how they answer this. Well, the Australian substitution. It's uh, Yannick, Yannick uh, Blair has come on. Jeremy Doyle's gone off. I should mention that uh, you're talking about the Koreans taking it right up to the Aussies. Uh, we've played only six minutes in this match. Already the Koreans have uh, double figures. They're up to 11 points now as uh, Ko rattles that one down. This is only the second quarter out of the 13 that have been played so far that uh, an opponent scored double figures against the Aussies. Well, it's impressive and it's a great start to this match. And the scores are level, 12 points all. Beautiful free throw shooting there from Ko Kwang Yook. Now the Koreans defending right at the corner, looking for an eight second violation. Eveson was superb in the way that he reeled that pass in. Heavy contact between him and Kim. Number four, Kim Ho Yong, his second foul. But what about the athleticism from Justin Eveson? And yeah, it was just before there where he, he got himself in position with great chair skills. He does his work very hard in the chair skills to get that position and he bent down, got the ball, and he's on, yeah, earned himself two free throws. First. We've got just over four minutes until quarter time. Of course, we're playing 10 minute quarters here in the international game. 12 minute quarters, isn't it, Brendan, in the uh, international league? Yes, it is, yeah. yeah. Only 10 minute quarters internationally, yeah. Which is standard across uh, all international basketball these days. This spoke might shoot that. No. Yeah, Koei had alone. good technique before, and there's a three second violation called on Kim Dong Hyun. So another turnover against the Koreans. The Aussies lead by just the two points. They've been doing quite a bit of their work from the foul line. Another foul. This is something that uh, Olivia talked about in the opener, Brendan. The, the number of fouls and the physical contest that the Koreans were going to bring uh, was well, something the Australians were, were expecting. Already there have been seven fouls assessed against the Koreans. Kim Ho Yong has got three. Oh, that's that's actually, number four, I should yes, say. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, Kim, he's one of the better players as well. He's already got he's out there, taking it to the odds. He's getting aggressive, Nine. but where is that going to put them at the end of the game? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a worry for the Koreans because Kim Ho Yong is renowned as a uh, shooter, one of the better shooters for career. He's had 14, 14 points in their first game and 20 in the second match. So he's been one of their leading scorers. And it misses the first free throw. Makes the second. So Australia lead by three. Cho just drives by Hartnett. And there's an offensive foul. Another one called. This is on Ko Kwang Yu, but it's his second personal foul as well. It's a particularly violent game at the moment and a timeout has been called by the Koreans. This is international wheelchair basketball, Darren. Aggressive, in your face, no quarter asked and none given. Three and a half minutes until quarter time, the Aussies lead by three. Let's listen to their coach, he was pretty unhappy when he called the first timeout at two minutes into the match. Let's see if he's happy at five minutes later. Way to make the adjustment, all right? We've stopped focusing on the referees, focusing on pushing hard. We're now in the bonus, we're going to the line. We need to keep that on our side, all right? Yeah, we all had a little chip early. We've now got it working how we want. It's process time. We go to the line, keep the pressure on five, both ways we can stop him. No dogs, no sniff, 
We're getting crossed out, and that's what's giving people going to the basket. Back straight to 14. Remember what Ben said last night? They go and send two back to free up five. So you've got to have that in the back of your mind. If you stick five in the backcourt, know that they've got people coming. That's where we're getting caught out. Let's go now. Knock these down. Oh, out of horns here. Out of horns here. Oh, Ben Ettridge laying down the law early in terms of uh, directing his players to get at the free throw line because the moment they're shooting the ball it's 63% from there, but they've already had eight attempts. Just nice, cheap points. Yes, yes, and coach, they're reinforcing the process and keep uh, consistent with what the Aussie team are doing. Uh, early on here, you talked about pressing some of, their, some of their guys and also they're in foul trouble as well, so the weathering the storm, this early storm from Korea, and that's a long game. It's a very long game, 40. We've still got close to 30 minutes to go. Eveson, he can shoot this. Guarded, but not good enough. Kim Dong Kyun was the man who was trying to put a little bit of pressure on the ball. Eveson's got 10 points. Ness has got six. The Australians still with four of the five members of their starting five out in the court. Long shot, missed by Ko. He'll go to the free throw line. The foul's called on Blair. Yes, Yannick didn't quite have position there again. Didn't, you've got to have your chair in front and covering the lane of the offensive player. Otherwise, the referees will call a foul on him. 